If I create the right conditions and give clear instructions, people can align their actions with their intentions. When their mind and body work together, a new experience unfolds. In that moment, the brain's philosophical circuits light up, creating more connections. Neurons string together, forming networks, and a chemical reaction occurs, resulting in a feeling or emotion. Feeling whole, empowered, or compassionate chemically teaches the body what the mind understands intellectually. Knowledge is for the mind, and experience is for the body. Embodying a philosophy occurs when knowledge and experience align. Research indicates that genes alone don't cause disease. It's the environment that signals genes to change. Emotions from experiences rewrite biological programs, influencing gene expression. Genes like Christmas lights turn on and off, and new experiences regulate them, impacting the body's structure and function. Repeating an experience conditions the mind and body to work together. Reproducing experiences becomes a skill or habit. Mastery happens when the mind and body seamlessly perform an action, becoming second nature. Reaching this level is a passion because individuals then master a philosophy, embodying it subconsciously. Following a specific formula, refined over eight years of research, allows people to access and make positive changes. Many students are experiencing remarkable transformations, from changes in thyroid hormones to the disappearance of brain tumors and restored sight in blind individuals. Imagine witnessing incredible things like deaf individuals regaining their hearing or tumors vanishing within seven days. These are the miracles I never expected to see in my lifetime. I feel incredibly humble, empowered, and excited. And my goal is to push the boundaries. If someone heals themselves from a severe health issue like stage four cancer, the natural next question is, why can't I help someone else heal? As we develop this skill, we witness people healing others regularly. We understand the science behind it. Then comes the question, do I need to be physically present to heal someone? We've discovered that being in a connected field allows healing even from a distance. For instance, a woman's brother had a massive stroke and fell into a coma. She shared his picture with her healing group and within an hour of focused healing, he woke up and left the hospital that night. This experience takes us to the next level. Developing the skill of healing others requires personal and shared experiences. Stepping out of the known and embracing the unknown is crucial. Those unafraid of failure, adept at connecting and open-hearted, form a group that continuously adds to the formula of healing. Many people live in a protective state, often unaware of it, spending 70% of their waking lives in stress or survival mode. Constantly scanning the environment for safety, any unpredictability triggers an alert, activating the body's danger response. Reconnecting with suppressed emotions in such a state can be a challenge, but it's essential for unlocking the full potential of healing abilities. When that happens, we start expecting a certain result. This anticipation often involves preparing for what might go wrong, and we unconsciously create emotions related to potential negative outcomes, fear, anxiety, worry, sadness, and pain. This becomes a habitual program. In a world where men are expected to show success and competitiveness, opening one's heart may seem challenging. However, in our work, I've observed men healing and transforming by practicing childlike openness, being curious, free, and letting go. For men, it often means letting go of the strategies they've used to achieve success. The surprising side effect is that 
When men truly open their hearts, I've witnessed instant healing from serious health conditions such as heart problems and even stage 4 cancer. The body releases chemicals, restoring and repairing itself. Understanding the science behind it, men realize that opening their hearts not only contributes to healing, but also allows them to lead from a different, more conscious perspective. Despite the lack of societal support for vulnerability in men, recent research highlights it as a crucial quality for great leadership. As men start pondering these ideas, they gradually begin to trust, open up, and experience increased happiness. The walls they've built to present a certain image to the world start breaking down. They discover that true joy doesn't come from external success or recognition, but from within. We provide numerous opportunities for men to practice opening their hearts, connecting, and experiencing gratitude. Heart opening experiences often occur when caring for others or giving selflessly. During healing sessions, men tap into their hearts and this genuine passion to give allows them to embrace a childlike freedom, becoming more relaxed and less rigid. This process challenges existing programming and requires a bit of knowledge and understanding. By guiding them and setting up experiences, Men gradually reach a point where they enthusiastically go for it, breaking free from societal norms and embracing a more authentic way of living. Now let's look at someone, maybe a woman, who went through a tough time as a child. She may not understand why she lives her life a certain way, but the childhood experience has left her confused or closed off from certain feelings. When she faces unsafe situations that trigger similar emotions, she might go back to that vulnerable child state without fully understanding why. If you give someone like her enough chances to feel safe, they'll eventually confront that emotional wall from their past. As they move through it, their body can experience the freedom it felt before that challenging event 30 years ago. This leads to a complete reorganization of information and the body's physiology. Imagine a man in his late 60s with a severe heart condition standing on stage. He shares his struggles, the medical treatments, dietary changes, and psychotherapy he tried. While these efforts helped him understand his situation, they didn't provide the instructions or formula to break free. However, during a walking meditation, he experiences something remarkable, the ability to walk the entire beach without chest pain for the first time in 20 years. This man, not a movie star or someone particularly young or successful looking, speaks to an audience of a thousand people. Men in the audience are moved, some even shedding tears. His relatable appearance and heartfelt story connect with them on a profound level. He describes in detail his initial doubts about the walking meditation results, expressing disbelief in front of the audience. The next day, empowered by his newfound ability to walk pain-free, he declares, today is the day. Why not transform into a version of yourself, the one you aspire to be in the future? Imagine a man once driven by the passion to provide for his family, now redirecting that same passion inward towards himself. As he walks on the beach, he shares with the audience, in one moment, I felt a level of love I had never experienced in my entire life. He goes on to describe a unique experience where he heard himself screaming, realizing it was the energy within him bursting out. A powerful moment witnessed by a thousand people, not from Hollywood, but as tangible evidence right before their eyes. This moment, akin to breaking the four-minute mile, shatters a consciousness limit. It becomes permission for others to believe in the possibility. Men in the audience, moved by the authenticity of the experience, 
start to see new possibilities for themselves. Once they witness a man achieving a breakthrough, it leaves an indelible mark on their consciousness. The evidence in three-dimensional reality becomes a beacon of inspiration. They think, if he can do it, so can I. A community forms, a collective consciousness, where individuals, regardless of age or physical limitations, find a path to transformation. One person's story, shared with humility and simplicity, grants permission for others to step out and explore new possibilities. The community, proud of its culture, embraces the balance between head and heart. They understand that directing the brain's compass and harnessing the energy of emotion towards coherent intentions brings about profound effects on reality. The approach emphasizes focusing on one's future self rather than dwelling on old patterns. Techniques like hypnosis or NLP might not be necessary when using this method. The key lies in concentrating on the future and working towards becoming the person one aspires to be. Let me answer that from two perspectives, as an investigator and a researcher. I've learned that the closer we get to the truth, the simpler it should be. Complexity can lead to overanalysis, hindering our ability to create or change. While there's value in analyzing things, when it's time to make a shift, we need to let go of overthinking. Practically speaking, people should first embrace knowledge and information before taking action. I'm not fixated on labels like NLP or hypnosis because I find people can get stuck in creating limited models. What I love is truth, which can be found in various teachings like NLP, the Bible, the Quran, or hypnosis. I started my journey with hypnosis because it helps bypass the analytical mind and reach the subconscious, where true transformation happens. While each approach has valuable aspects, I avoid categorizing them to prevent division. Mentioning specific terms might alienate some individuals who may have had different experiences or perspectives. I'm careful with language to keep the conversation open. I want people to connect the ideas with what resonates for them, whether it's from programming, religious teachings, or historical knowledge. I steer away from putting it in a box to allow continuous evolution and change. There are common threads of truth throughout history, and I avoid categorization as it limits the potential impact by filtering it through past experiences. I refrain from using specific terms or languages because words that held significance in the past may not convey the same meaning today. I've witnessed scholars at religious conferences arguing about the meaning of words from ancient texts. The key is to keep the understanding fresh and open, avoiding the constraints of labels and categories. All right, let's tackle that from two angles because people join our workshops for various reasons. Some are dealing with health issues, Others are after more money, a new job, or a better relationship. People seek different things, and for me, the reason doesn't matter much. What matters is that they grab onto a vision, 
learning the art of creation. It could be sparked by a desire for wealth, better health, or something mystical doesn't bother me. The key is that they find that sweet spot, a moment of pure presence and passion with a clear vision, a sharp mind, and an elevated emotion. This creates heart coherence, sending out a new energy into the universe. Whether someone wants wealth or health, my focus is on teaching them the how. We've seen folks go from living in their cars to making millions, or from battling serious illnesses to complete healing. People may think they come for specific reasons, but ultimately, we're all seeking wholeness. The magic happens when you feel so whole and connected that you no longer want. It's about reaching that point where you feel like you have everything. Teaching people, this helps them grasp that when they open their eyes after a meditation or an experience, they're not searching for something, they feel like it's already occurred. Feeling like it's already happened aligns your body emotionally with that future reality. The challenge is maintaining that connection when life throws curveballs, like getting stuck in traffic, waiting in line at the bank, or dealing with annoying co-workers. These moments can disconnect you from your envisioned future, plunging you back into the energy of the past. It's not a fault, it's just a reminder to re-establish that connection to the future. Recognizing when you're disconnected is crucial. If you find yourself blaming others for how you feel or think, you're slipping into the victim mentality. Those who truly shape their lives realize their thoughts and feelings are the architects of their reality. It's a shift from being a victim to becoming a creator. Many think they desire certain things due to a sense of lack. If someone says they want wealth for freedom, we reframe it. Let's focus on freedom. Why wait for wealth to feel free? It's about understanding that your emotions influence your thoughts and those thoughts shape your life. It's not about waiting for external factors, it's about causing the effect. The emphasis shifts from acquiring something external to becoming a certain person. In our workshops, we immerse people in habits of becoming, walking, sitting, standing, lying down. It's about embodying the new self until it becomes second nature. People often come seeking healing, but realize it's about unlearning. breaking old habits, and becoming aware of automatic behaviors. They may have lived in unworthiness or guilt for years, so becoming a new person requires shedding the old self. It's an uncomfortable process, akin to the death of the old personality, yet applying the formula during this discomfort helps them truly become someone else. As they transform, they might discover that what they thought they wanted isn't what they truly desire. Synchronicities, opportunities, and wonderful events unfold effortlessly, and they realize they're not actively doing anything. It's a natural flow. They're not the same person anymore because they've dealt with their past selves. Your personality shapes your reality, how you think, act, and feel. 
when they no longer think, act, and feel the same way, but have embraced a new mindset, they bring this change back into their lives, creating a fresh habit. People around them notice the shift, recognizing that something's different. In their meditations, they tackle emotional reactions, judgments, blame, and excuses. This self-confrontation is the real work. Conquering the old self leads to self-love and satisfaction impacting how they relate to others. Judgmental, hateful, or impatient attitudes vanish, replaced by love, gratitude, and authentic joy. The community evolves into a conscious state, finding joy within themselves, not reliant on external factors. It's not about needing possessions for happiness, but genuinely feeling joyful from within. This self-love becomes the secret to successful relationships where individuals working on themselves can unite their degrees of self-love. Some misconstrue self-love as pleasure, but it's about being content with oneself, reducing the dependence on external love. Relationships extend beyond intimate partners. We have important connections with various people. Loving one person doesn't mean despising others. It's about appreciating the diverse relationships that enrich our journey as souls. In a relationship, consistency is key, especially when it comes to men and women. The most crucial factor is sharing a common purpose. If both individuals aim to be their best selves and want the same from life, they're moving in sync. Whether the passion is to change the world, end hunger, or combat global warming, as long as both share this purpose, they're on the same path. Understanding that disagreements will happen and that each person brings their best to the relationship is vital. It's about being responsible for one's emotions and not relying on the other to fix them. Celebrating triumphs together is essential with each person having their world. When connecting, they reflect on what they've learned supporting each other when asked. Mistakes and challenges are inevitable, but the key is not to dwell in negativity. Acknowledge errors, discuss improvements, and move forward. Communication plays a significant role, ensuring both are aligned in purpose. The effort should not be about working in the relationship, but about personal growth. Healthy relationships involve bringing out the best in each other, learning from experiences, and supporting one another in realizing their purpose. This creates a strong bond based on genuine love. When individuals focus on a shared purpose greater than themselves, the relationship flows naturally with less effort. It's not about working on the relationship, but on personal development.